Good morning and welcome to this Committee of Finance meeting. Unfortunately, we will have to adjourn for a few minutes. Please bear with us. Thank you.
Good morning, members of parliament, support staff, radio listeners, TV viewers, those following via social media, and members of the media. Welcome to this meeting of the Committee of Finance number three of today, Wednesday, February 8, 2023. I would like to welcome the Minister of Finance, Ardwell Irian, and his support staff. We have established a quorum of six members of parliament, six factions, my apologies. Please stand for a moment of silence. Thank you. At this time, I would like to take a moment to express our sympathy to the people of Turkey and Syria for the earthquake that took place this week. In addition to that, we have quite a large community on St. Martin of Syrians and Turkish persons, and I hope that when we do meet them, we also extend our heartfelt condolences to them and their families and keep them in our prayers. Before I go any further, I look to the floor to see if there's any notifications from any members of parliament. I give the floor to MP Sarah Westcott-Williams. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, Lady of this committee, and uh, good morning, of course, to you, my colleagues again, as well as the minister and his entourage, everyone tuned into this meeting. Madam Chair, Lady, um, just before this meeting, we had a meeting, um, a public meeting, a question hour meeting of parliament and I need to put this out there as part of the notifications and just maybe the answer will somehow come to me. And the, the meeting that was scheduled for this afternoon at 2 p.m. was a meeting in which two ministers needed to come back to respond to questions by members of parliament with respect to preservation of monuments, etc. I ask why this meeting, the one of 2 p.m. this afternoon, was canceled yesterday, and the chairperson of parliament, in responding to me, indicated that we had received a cancellation request from the minister. Madam Chair, Lady, the answer that we received is a cancellation request from the Minister of ECYS, which indeed was shared with members of Parliament. And the question still remained whether the Minister of Vromi also supported that cancellation request and could not be at the meeting of Parliament this afternoon. But not only did the Chairperson of Parliament give that indication to which I had a follow-up question, but upon requesting a point of order, the chairperson of parliament abruptly decided there could be no point of order, one, and maybe some things should be, and now I'm paraphrasing, should be left unsaid or unaddressed. For my sake, I would like to know via the chair of this committee to the chair of parliament or to the presidium of parliament for that matter, what is the position that point of orders, points of order cannot be raised? Should I have used verbatim what is in the rules of order, a proposal of order? Does the chair feel one that during a question hour, no points of order or proposals of order for that matter can be raised? And if so, where does he derive that right from? If that is the feeling. So Madam Chair, Lady, again, I put it out there and hope that it will be responded to by whosoever. 
and to inform the President of Parliament that taking the word from a member of Parliament without the reasons as put in the rules of order to take the word from a member of Parliament or not give the word for that matter is a serious infringement as part of the duties of a President of Parliament. My other comments, Madam Chair, Lady, I would leave for other time as I do not want to exhaust notifications in the way that they might not be meant. Thank you, Madam Chair, Lady. Thank you, MP Westcott Williams, for your notification, which is duly documented, and I will also uh, refer to Article 44 of the Rules of Order for any further discussion, and I'm sure that this can be taken up with the President of Parliament. Before we proceed, I see that MP Bryson has requested a notification. Thank you, Madam Chair, Lady. Good morning to you and my colleagues once again. Madam Chair, um, increasingly, as you just heard, um, you hear, and it's particularly from a couple members of Parliament, this sort of jab being thrown, not just at the chair of parliament, but the vice chairs, and also chairs of committees of parliament. You know, Madam Chair, I sat with, in parliament with that minister of finance across from me in, as a member of parliament. And I can recall, and others will as well, where it was said, and I quote, the term point of order does not exist in the rules of order. Stop using it. Ms. Madam Chair, we were basically banned. Talk about taking away the voice of members of parliament. We were forbidden from issuing points of order as long as that chair sat over there as members of the opposition in efforts to muzzle us as opposition members of parliament. Madam Chair, fast forward today and you hear this type of rhetoric. You hear the little chatter on the side. But Madam Chair, it is not us or any of the current chairs of committees or the presidium or others that have set a bad precedent when it comes to trying to muzzle members of parliament. It is not this government, this coalition, that came and allowed members of parliament, or members of parliament to hear things like, don't pass it and you're going to see, and go completely unaddressed by then chairman of parliament. Or have ministers, her ministers come here and tell a member of parliament let me dumb it down for you and also allow those things to go unaddressed. And today wants to tell this parliament and make it seem like you are being muzzled, like your opportunity is being taken away. Madam Chair, that is the absolute height of hypocrisy. Even the opportunity that we're affording to some coalition members to use a projector, when members of our of, of opposition at the time tried to use a projector, we were told no by then President of Parliament from the UD. Madam Chair, none of that, nothing near that, is happening in this Parliament right now. Because the aim has been to restore order and proper use of terms within the Parliament and done in consultation with the Secretaries General who have knowledge probably then more than all of us on how we are supposed to conduct the meetings of Parliament. Madam Chair, my notification is to encourage all chairs of committees, vice chairs, and president of parliament to continue and understand that it is on the basis of bitterness of people who had a short time where they were able to abuse the rules of order for their own personal engagements and vendettas. And those days are over. And it is good that they are over. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, MP Bryson, for your notification. Moving on to the agenda point for this meeting, the tax reform measures and government's vision for tax reform, IS 928 slash 2021 to 2022, dated May 23rd, 2022, which was requested by MP Sarah Westcott-Williams. We go over to the agenda point. On May 23rd, 2022, Parliament received a letter from MP Westcott Williams requesting that a meeting of the Committee of Finance of Parliament be convened with the above mentioned agenda point. The presence of the Minister of Finance was also requested. As noted above, this document is registered as income in IS slash 928 slash PY 2021 to 2022, 
dated May 23rd, 2022, and can be found on the P drive. Hence, the reason for today's meeting. At this time, I would like to first give the floor to the request of this meeting, MP Westcott-Williams, to elucidate her request. I give the floor to you, MP Westcott-Williams. Thank you again, Madam Chair Lady. Madam Chair Lady, indeed, as you pointed out in the introduction, I was somewhat surprised that it is a request going back to May of 2022 regarding tax reform that has been used for this meeting of the committee. So it behooves me to ask Madam Chair Lady whether the other point on the agenda or on the request for this meeting, has that point been dealt with already? My request of May 23rd, 2022, had two topics. One, tax reform, as well as the issue of cryptocurrency. In calling for this meeting, I see no mention to the second agenda point, and hence my question as to how we, if and how we will be dealing with agenda point number two. It's not mentioned in the convocation, so I, I would like to know about that, one. Secondly, subsequently to that request, several matters have been addressed to the Minister of Finance regarding tax reform in general. I can, amongst others, refer to a letter to the Minister of Finance dated the 19th of January of this year with questions. Am I going to get answers to those questions as, as, as well in this meeting? And then finally, as an introduction, a request for a public meeting on tax reform has also been submitted by several colleagues and myself. And I would like to know when it is when will this meeting on tax reform, the same issue that we are dealing with in this committee meeting, when will that be, when will that be scheduled? So, um, Madam Chair, Lady, my, again, my request is, my request was clear back in May of 2022. And so I ask, what about the other agenda point for one? And secondly, when is it expected that the request by members of parliament for a public meeting on Thank you, MP Westcott-Williams, for